Now let's check the divergence theorem for the vector field in part b. So the vector field is given as 1 over r squared in the r direction. And let's do the surface integral first. So v2 dot dA. So as we discussed in the last video, in spherical coordinates, dA is just equal to r squared sine theta d theta d phi. And in this case, uh, we're on a spherical shell on the surface of a spherical shell with the radius r. So on this shell, the vector field, the magnitude is always 1 over big r squared. So this r here is a constant. And also I've got to put the r hat. So remember, dA is a vector. So this is the expression for dA. And then theta ranges from 0 to pi, and phi ranges from 0 to 2 pi. So we've gone from this abstract surface integral into something concrete, something we can we can uh, evaluate. So the r squares, they cancel each other out. These two, they dot each other to give you a 1. So in the end, you're left with this integral. So theta d theta d phi. So integrating out the phi, there are no phi terms inside, so it just gives us pi 2. Integrating sine theta becomes negative cosine theta from 0 to pi. And you get 1 minus negative 1. So in the end, you get 4 pi. So this is the value of the surface integral. So once we do the volume integral of the divergence, you would expect to get an answer that is equal to 4 pi as well. So if we, if we try to calculate the divergence, so we're in spherical coordinates. So the formula is equal to the, actually no square, the partial derivative with respect to y times r square times the r component of this vector. And for this vector field, it's just 1 over r squared times r squared. So this whole thing times r squared. So that's a formula for divergence in spherical coordinates. So there are other terms in uh, theta and in terms of phi, but since this uh, vector field has no theta or phi terms, so I'm just going to, those would just be equal to zero. So if you differentiate this, you'll find this is a differentiation of a constant one, so it's equal to zero. So you might be surprised. So this integral over here, you're integrating zero over the entire you know, over the entire space enclosed by the spherical shell. So this should be zero. But this contradicts with this result. This should be four pi. And this is zero. So is there something wrong with the divergence theorem? And actually the the catch here is that uh, this vector field uh, there's something fishy going on when r is equal to zero at the origin. So the, the divergence that we calculated here, it is true that it is equal to zero but only when it's not in the origin. When it's at the origin, uh, this thing is, uh, blows up, and the divergence at the origin is not equal to zero. It's equal to zero everywhere else, but it's not equal to zero at the origin. And in order to reconcile these two results, uh, later on in the book, you'll encounter something called the direct delta function. And using that, you can come up with a consistent result. But right here, with what we know so, uh, so far, we for this uh, vector field here in part B, we're getting different results for the surface integral and the volume integral.